Welcome to Season 1 Project 3 of the Learn By Doing series. And this is what you can expect to create in this course. Now the most important thing that you need to know, first of all, is that you need to have either an educational, commercial, or a pro license. Touch engine development, currently not supported with non-commercial licenses. So you do need to have a paid license, and if you go over to the engine plugin here, it only works with Windows, and also it is still in beta, right? And if you go over to the repository here, I have it open here, you can see that you also need to have 2022.33910. So make sure you have that version, and we'll be using 5.2.1. Okay, and what we're gonna do first is to go ahead and download this as a zip file. Okay, so once you're done downloading the plugin, what you're gonna do is unzip it and keep it open to get ready to copy and paste into the plugins folder. Now, before we do that, we don't actually have a project file yet. So just like before, go ahead and go over to your template folder and we're going to control C this, and then let's go over to September, which is when I'm doing this course. So paste and let it complete. Okay. And then what you're going to do is to rename this to S1 P3. Of course, I'm just going to control A and C and copy this name and then paste this over here as well on the U project. Okay. So for some of you, maybe the template project file is still in 5.1. And in order to do that, all you need to do is to right click on the U project, show more options and switch under engine version. Make sure this is uh, 5.2 and click OK. And if it's the first time you're launching this, so I'm just going to launch it. It will compile shaders. So you're going to wait for that and it should open in no time. Okay, so now that your editor is open, you want to go to your top right corner and confirm that you do indeed have version 5.2.1. That means we're ready to go. So you can just first close this project out because we need to transfer these plugin files into our project folder. So let's create a new folder called plugins. Okay, enter. And then inside that folder, we need to make a touch engine folder. Okay, dive inside and then we need to select all and then copy and then paste. Okay, and then we can wait for that to finish. Okay, and then let's go into the root folder and launch this project once again. Okay, once it's open, we want to go to edit plugins and search for touch. And as you can see, it's over here. We want to enable this. And of course we have to restart. So click on that. Okay. So you should also have this pop-up message. Now for this, what you need to have is visual studio, a community version is fine, but you need to have the components when you're installing visual studio for, um, components for game development for windows for unreal engine, I think, uh, make sure that's installed. And if you have that, you should be able to click on yes. And this takes quite a long time. There is no like progress bar or anything. You just have to wait, let your computer sit. And then when you come back, you should be able to see the editor open. So let's click on yes. And then just wait for this process to end and we'll get back to the video. Okay. So we'll come back. You should have the same screen that I have here. Perfect. If you don't, leave a comment down below, you know, we'll try to uh, address the issue that you may have. But uh, if you do have the same screen, if you search for touch, you can see that indeed it is enabled. And if you close this out, now that the plugin is loaded, we'll have access to uh, new classes that we can inherit from. So right click and let's create a new blueprint class. And then you want to just open this drop down here and search for a touch engine actor, right? We want to inherit from this and just select here. And then we'll call this BP, uh, TE for touch engine. This is going to be kind of our manager. So we'll call it TE uh, manager. Okay. And then you can go ahead and click enter. 
And this is where we will start to build our blueprints. And as you can see, there are some parameters here that allow us to control how Touch Engine is being updated in the background. Now we'll, you know, tweak a lot of that later down the line because for now it seems beta is a little bit inefficient. So, you know, we'll have to optimize quite a bit, but that's later. For now, we're done with the Unreal Engine side of things. So we should basically save all. So file, save all. Okay. And then we can now go into Touch Designer. Okay, so let's get into the touch designer side of things. Apologies for the previous Unreal section. There's a problem with my microphone, so the audio was bad, but now it's fixed, so we can continue. Now in this new touch designer project, we just get rid of the default stuff here. And let's just save first. Once you're done saving, let's start. So we first need a container, so we add a container here. And then we name this to something like TE test one. Okay. And then let's go in and then we'll be basically doing an easy, simple input output test of touch engine. So let's first work on the input and we'll get a chop input. So we do it in here. And then basically this isn't very useful because when we get the number uh, that comes through our chop input, we can actually use it, you know, to any other parameter, which would be great, right? Uh, but I figured is you can actually use a constant here and then a math chop. And basically we just add zero to the incoming number with combined chops to add. Now we can use this to set some parameter like, you know, the resolution or whatever. Um, but for now we'll just set another constant. So we'll just make a constant here. Let's just name this like size. And then we can obviously do this and export the reference. Okay. And I'll just add in a merge here. So merge. And then to get the output, we need an out chop. Okay. Now one more thing we need to test is the video device in. So the webcam. So that's going to be top video device in. So that's that. And then, okay, I'll just play forward. And I'm just going to blur this out for privacy reasons. And I'll just disable that. And then what we'll do is we'll just get an analyze top. And then basically, yeah, that's fine. And we'll do a chop two or top to chop and get our red channel. So just get rid of all the other ones here. And so if I just play this, if you hover your hand over your webcam, you should see that the values change and we want to be able to see this also in touch engine. So we'll just stop this and then add this into the merge. Okay. And then exit this. Uh, we'll just save this. Okay. And then to save this talks, we just do right click and save component. And then we can just leave the name as is and save. Okay, so there's one thing I want to show you, and it's the warning messages that you'll get when you're loading in your Tox file later when we actually load it into Unreal Engine. Um, but what it is basically is the video device in here, and it's the first few frames that the node is trying to fetch the the uh, frames basically from the webcam, but it hasn't gotten any, so it throws the, you know the yellow triangle, um, and I can even replicate it here. So if I just turn this camera off. And then go here and add in an engine top and load in the tox file like that. And then if we play here and then unload and reload, you see that for like a sudden moment, right? You get that. And in Unreal Engine, what it turns out to be is, you know, the warning message saying, hey, there's an issue with your component. Basically, it's not really an error. It's just the node that's trying to catch up to the process. And so, yeah, I just wanted to explain this uh, because for me, I really didn't know what was going on and it turned out nothing was wrong. It's just the video device on top. Okay, so let's get back into the Unreal Engine side of things. Now that we have the TOX file, we need to import it into our project. So let's first create 
a new folder. So we do control shift N, we'll just call this T T E the touch engine. Okay. And then in the touch engine folder, what you need to do is to go to where you saved your talks file. You want to just control X that, and then go into your content browser, go to your TE folder and just paste it in. Okay. And then let's go back into Unreal Engine and you'll just wait and get this message and click on import. Okay. And now we have this asset, which is just a reference to the talks file. Now you want to put it in the content browser if you are intending to package the project. Otherwise you can reference it outside, um, uh, but it won't get packaged, right? Uh, that's fine. So we can close that. And you want to go now to where your blueprint was, which is here. Okay. And drag that in. Let's zero it out. And this is where you load your talks asset. Okay. So let's load that in. Okay. And this loading message isn't really useful. So what I would suggest is basically save this and then run it and wait until you get the warning message, which comes from the video device in node. There you go. So this is what I was talking about. It says there were warnings, but as I explained before, it's not really a problem. Okay. So we can just close this out and then quit. And as you can see down here now in the component settings, it was black before, but now you can see the inputs and the outputs, right? So this is kind of like your construction script for the touch engine. So we can even put a value like 20 here. So now what this will do is that we'll get an output of 20 rather than zero if we don't set it. And now this is the name of our output called out one. Okay. So to get the output, we want to go to the touch engine blueprint itself and we can get rid of these. Okay. And then this is the most important component, which is the touch engine component. We we'll just click on that. And down here, this is where you get all the important events that's related to touch engine. And for us, it's going to be this one, the on outputs received. And this will basically execute every frame that you allow touch engine to refresh, which is going to be uh, 60 here. Um, I would set it at 30 because we're just testing it. And there's another one here that's called uh, send mode for performance reasons. I would do on access and then we'll keep it independent. Um, so here, this is where we get, you know, your every frame sort of 30 FPS. And then to get it, what we do is we drag this component in. Okay. And we do a get uh, touch engine output. Okay. And then remember that our name was called out one. So we do out one, and then this is where we get the value. Okay. So I would say that the output pin called value is a little bit, I don't know, misleading, but basically you don't get the values here. What we do first is we, we do break. Um, I think it's chop. So break touch engine chop. Now this is the array that contains our two channels, right? And to do this, we just do a for each loop. Now I would put in a Boolean. Let's just say you had a wrong output name, then you don't want to actually run this. So let's just put a branch in between. Okay. And then let's just connect this over here. And this will give us the two channels. Okay. Now what we need to do now again is we do break touch engine chop channel. Okay. And then this will give us all of your samples, right? Now our one is a single sample. So all we need to do is to do a get copy. So it's always going to be zero if you only have one, one sample, but you can obviously have multiple samples in a channel. Uh, and so you would do a for each loop over here, but we don't need to do that. Of course. Now we will now need to just print string just to see that we're getting the values. Now let's just say, I think we had the size channel on the first one and then the R channel. That's kind of the camera thing on the second channel. So let's just sort of differentiate it um, with the text color. So first let's change the duration to one and text color. What we can do is basically do a select utilities. And then here, let's just do like 
if index equals zero and put this in here. So if it's zero, we just do, let's just say red. And then if it's false, so it's one, we just do like a blue one here. Okay. And then of course we want to just print the values here. So we just drag this into the string. Okay. And then this basically should be working. So now let's just compile and save. Okay. Let's get into our map and then let's just save the map as well. And then we can just run this. And as you remember, because we put 20 here, we should see 20 here as well. So let's just click on play and you'll see how long it takes to load it. And this is, I think, one of the kind of weird things about Touch Engine. As you can see, these warnings again, due to the um, video device and node, but now you can see that we have 20 here. And then this is our camera thing. So if we just hover around our finger or whatever in the laptop camera, you can see that it, we can get the values uh, in real time, which is fantastic. And this is what I'm basically using uh, for the R&D that you saw in the course. Okay, so there's one more tip for you for Touch Engine. So let's go back into the blueprints. Now, of course, for our case over here, very simple. We only have two channels. We already know what index zero and one is, but most likely you'll end up using a lot more channels and that makes, you know, figuring out what indexes belong to what channels, right? In that case, of course, we already have this name um, output and this gives us the name of the chop channel. So we can actually just test this out. So just put this into the print string and let's just compile and then run this. After it loads, we should see the names R and size. Okay, as you can see, that works. And of course, these are annoying messages, just ignore them. And what's useful about this, of course, is that you can use all the utility um, functions within Unreal to, let's just say, split a string, because you might have like a channel that's like um, R-1, R-2, R-3, uh, and then you can use the dash as the split condition. And then just basically, um, if the left-hand side contains R, then you want to run some kind of code, or you can even do like, oh, if this string contains this character, then do this kind of code. And that's how you will, you know, manage the large number of channels that you may be using uh, in Touch Engine. So that's everything that I'm going to share with you in this free portion of this course. Now, of course, you may be interested in knowing how I exactly created this particular R&D. In that case, you can visit interact.live and take not only this course, but the two previous other courses at the time of release. So I hope to see you there.